Hello and welcome. You're watching NDTV 24/7. I'm Rishika Barwa. Top focus story: Prime Minister Modi has spoken with Russian President Putin over the phone. Prime Minister's office has confirmed that the leaders have reviewed the situation in Ukraine, especially in the city of Kharkiv, where many Indian students are still stuck. They discussed the safe evacuation of Indian nationals from conflict areas. This is Prime Minister Modi. Remember, has chaired an all-important meeting on the Ukraine crisis, the fifth such high-level meet. in just the last 3 days now this is an extremely crucial meeting and an extremely crucial conversation that the prime minister has had with the russian president at a time when government sources are saying that the city of kharkiv where there are thousands of indian students still stranded is virtually under russian control sources have said that india is in touch with russia to ensure the safe passage of students including uh, exploring the possibility of evacuation from the russia ukraine border neeta sharma joins us with the very latest on the phone line uh, neeta government sources at the moment telling us that uh, kharkiv is virtually under russian control at a time like this when we know there are several students in the thousands still stranded in kharkiv the conversation between prime minister modi and the russian president uh, is of great significance Yes, Rishika. But prior to this, you know, before the Prime Minister spoke to uh, Putin, there were a lot of background negotiations between India and Russia. In fact, due to these background negotiations, only it was, uh, you know, possible that uh, uh, Indians are now being evacuated from Kiev, uh, Kharkiv, uh, uh, with the help of Russians. In fact, you know, the government sources, as you were also mentioning, are very categorical when they say Kharkiv is now virtually under Russian control, and Russians, on Indian request, in fact, avoided those areas from where Indians were supposedly travelling. All girls, students, because you know, since last three or four days, we were seeing so many videos which were going viral in which students were, uh, you know, uh, telling various sorts of complaints and various uh, sorts of problems that they were facing. So all girls, students are now on their way to the western border by train. Uh, some boys are left behind, but you know, the government authorities are also working out a plan to pull them out. Also, uh, Russian, in fact, uh, Russia is also helping India. Uh, for safe passage in other cities also that that plan is also being worked out that's what our sources are telling us in that backdrop the prime minister of india spoke to putin and you know as you were on, also mentioning that it uh, they spoke about the welfare and how uh, the situation of ukraine especially in the city of kharkiv where indian students were stuck they discussed this issue and uh, now uh, what we are being told <laughs> this operation ganga as many as 17000 indian nationals have already reached uh, left ukraine and have reached india after you know various advisories were sent out by the indian government and as for the remaining uh, of them they are you know still being evacuated from right. various countries neighboring countries Rishika? all right neeta thanks very much for joining us with that update meanwhile the other big development we're tracking at this are The United Nations General Assembly has passed a resolution that's demanded China to stop the aggression against Ukraine. Uh, at the UNGA vote, crucially, India and China were among 34 nations to abstain. 141 countries, however, have passed this resolution. Nidhi Rastan joins us with the very latest. Nidhi. Well, this is the fourth time, actually, uh, in the last few weeks at a UN forum. that india has abstained and therefore continue to sit on the fence as far as russia is concerned uh, if you look at the countries uh, that have abstained that it also includes uh, afghanistan um, uh, Bhutan, uh, sorry um, uh, 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 some of our neighbors like bangladesh etc pakistan sri lanka who have abstained uh, but other countries like bhutan afghanistan nepal who are also in our neighborhood they voted for this resolution and against russia at the unga uh now uh, the indian uh, uh, envoy to the united nations uh, mr tirumurthy has explained why india has voted this way essentially saying and repeating what india has said before that uh, the uh, safe passage for indian nationals is the priority of india at this time uh, and uh, again calling on uh, there to be a cessation of hostilities and violence uh, in he pointed out that india has dispatched humanitarian assistance Uh, to Ukraine that India supports the international community's call for an immediate ceasefire etc 
Um, but once again, India choosing to play it safe with Russia, given its long-standing ties uh, with Russia. And even though overwhelmingly the world has voted against Russia, uh, India has decided, uh, not surprisingly, uh, to abstain once again. Interestingly, Rishika, just one final point. Uh, the UAE was one of the other countries that was consistently abstaining in its votes uh, regarding Russia. But today, uh, the UAE has voted against Russia at the UNDA. So that certainly has been something uh, of interest to look at. Thanks, Nidhi, for joining us uh, with all those details. We'll, of course, continue to track that story very closely. Meanwhile, shifting focus earlier today, all Indian nationals in Kharkiv were asked to immediately leave for their own safety as Russian action intensified in Ukraine's second largest city uh, of Kharkiv in a tweet, a series of tweets rather, that was put out by the Indian embassy in uh, Ukraine. Uh, they underscored the importance of Indians leaving within a stipulated time frame. That uh, time frame expired at 9.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time. There was a second advisory that talked about uh, three different locations uh, ranging from 11 kilometers to 16 kilometers away, even urging students to walk if they needed to, uh, but uh, in, in all possible situations to just try and get out of Kharkiv as soon as possible. Meanwhile, uh, the Ministry of External Affairs has said that there are over 3,000 students who've returned under Operation Ganga. However, they are advising students, still anybody stranded in Kharkiv, to evacuate immediately. The advisory that has just been issued by our embassy a little while ago and also by us uh, on the need for our nationals to leave Kharkiv immediately is on the basis of information received from Russia. So this is on the basis of information that was received from Russia. That deadline expired at 9.30 p.m. IST and one sincerely hopes that students made it out safely to those designated areas. Meanwhile, an update from Ground Zero. It is day seven of the Russian invasion in uh, Kiev. There were reports that a 40-mile-long convoy of Russian armored vehicles is now just about 15 miles north of the capital of Kiev. Uh, the TV tower was attacked. Five people were killed in that attack. Uh, meanwhile, in Kharkiv, four people were killed and nine others wounded in intensive shelling. In the latest, the government building close to uh, the train station was also attacked. Uh, in Kherson, meanwhile, the Russian military claims to have taken control of this southern city. Here's an update. On day seven, Russian paratroopers landed in Ukraine's second largest city, Kharkiv, only yesterday, dozens of civilians, including an Indian student, were killed in Russian bombings. The Ukrainian military says Russian troops also attacked a regional military hospital. A missile struck key buildings belonging to the police, the security service of Ukraine and Karazin National University on Wednesday morning. The city's mayor says Kharkiv is partially surrounded by the Russian army, which the Ukrainian military is currently holding back heroically. The Russian military claims to have taken control of the Black Sea port city of Kherson, a claim Ukraine has denied. But if Russia has captured it, experts say it would be a big blow to Ukraine since it is located strategically on the Dnieper River and therefore becomes crucial for movement of supplies. Another Ukraine's port city in the southeast, Mariupol, is reportedly under constant shelling from Russia. The BBC is reporting that a 40-mile-long convoy of Russian armored vehicles is about 15 miles north of the capital, Kiev. There are also reports of local resistance to Russian forces. These pictures show a highway in Zaporizhia where local residents put up a fight. Another video shows the National Guard of Ukraine. Russia's foreign minister, meanwhile, upped the ante and warned of a nuclear war. Ukraine President Lodomir Zelensky has sought help from the United States, saying it is important to stop the aggressor at the earliest. Ukraine claims it has killed 5,840 Russian troops. For now, the Russian military action is facing better than expected resistance from Ukraine, but it has also become more aggressive. NDTV Bureau Report. The U.S. President uh, Joe Biden has vowed to make Putin pay for the invasion of Russia but clarified that the U.S. won't fight Russian troops on the ground. 
Meanwhile, uh, the Ukrainian President Zelensky said that uh, there were 6,000 Russian soldiers who've also been killed. But while he may make gains on the battlefield, he'll pay a continuing high price over the long run. We're joining with European allies to find and seize their yachts, their luxury apartments, their private jets. We're coming for you, ill-begotten gains. Це вже за межею людяності. Такий ракетний удар свідчить, що для багатьох людей в Росії наш Київ абсолютно чужий. Вони нічого не знають про нашу столицю, про нашу історію, але у них є наказ стерти нашу історію, стерти нашу країну, стерти нас усіх. Російські матері втрачають дітей в абсолютно чужій для них країні. Вдумайтесь у це число. Майже 6 тисяч загиблих росіян. Meanwhile, international reports uh, today have suggested that the Russian foreign minister has said that if there were to be a third world war, it will involve nuclear weapons. More than half a million Ukrainians, remember, have fled the fighting so far. Lavrov said that uh, Russia, which launched what it called a special military operation against Ukraine last week, would face a real danger if Kiev acquired nuclear weapons. Meanwhile, let's shift our focus back to India's evacuation efforts. Now, India, remember, has stepped up evacuation efforts along bordering countries. Here's the latest on Operation Ganga. Celebrations, hugs, smiles and tears at the Delhi airport today as more evacuation flights arrived from Ukraine's neighboring countries, Romania, Hungary and the first ones from Poland. The Mathur family from Delhi waited for 20-year-old Ayushi, who was stuck at the Poland border for three days. She is a third-year MBBS student at the Lviv Medical University in western Ukraine. I am actually with my brothers and sisters. So that's why I didn't stop with these little children. And I told them that we will go to my dad. So that's why I'm waiting for a very long time for my dad. Everything we got, if you talk about the borders, we were standing there for three days, continuously. While parents are relieved that their children are safe, they are also concerned about their uncertain future. In the third year, my dad is my dad. तो अभी हमारे को ये नहीं पता कि उधर का कैसे क्या रहेगा ऑनलाइन क्लास होते होते एकदम बच्चों को बोला कि आप हॉस्टल छोड़ के और पोलैंड की तरफ निकल जाइए वहाँ से काफ़ी बच्चे हमारे जो जानकारी में थे चार पांच बच्चे वो वहाँ यूक्रेन से करके और इधर डिफेंस में गए हैं मेडिकल उधर से कम्प्लीट किया और इधर डिफेंस वाले उसमें अपना लाइन बच्चों ने बनाया है and with ministers present to welcome the students back home, it is clear that evacuation is the priority for the government. Senior members of the government also accompanied evacuation flights. So Prime Minister has said to make sure that everyone goes home safely. Yeah. So I'll be here, tell your friends also okay. that we will be here and the Indian government is standing fully behind. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. A C-17 aircraft of the Indian Air Force also left for Romania today with humanitarian assistance and will bring back students by tonight. According to the Ministry of External Affairs until yesterday, a total of nearly 12,000 Indians have left Ukraine since India issued its first advisory. With Russia taking control of more and more cities in Ukraine, for the Indian government, it is now a race against time. While families here have been reunited with their loved ones, for many other parents, the wait continues. In New Delhi, with camera person Manoj Thakur, this is Sukirti Devedi for NDTV. As the crisis in Ukraine escalates and evacuation efforts are stepped up, campaigning in Uttar Pradesh continues unabated. Sanket with the latest. Crisis in Ukraine, campaign in UP. It seems that the central government and its campaigning blitzkrieg remain uninterrupted even when a massive rescue operation of Indians in war-torn Ukraine is on. In his Sonbhadra meeting though, the Prime Minister mentioned the efforts under Operation Ganga. वहां से सुरक्षित निकालने के लिए इतना बड़ा अभियान चला रहे हैं ऑपरेशन गंगा के तहत 
कई हजार नागरिकों को वहां से देश वापस लाया जा चुका है बट द कैंपेन कंटिन्यू होम मिनिस्टर अमित शाह कैंपेन इन चंदौली एंड आजमगढ़ and the prime minister after holding four meetings in 3 days on the ukraine crisis still managing to campaign in up with a public meeting each in sonbhadra and ghazipur today the pm will also be camping for two days in his lok sabha constituency varanasi on the 4th and the 5th of march molya bharat mata ki the bjp hasn't shied away from using the evacuation of indians as a poll issue baba viswanath ki भारतीयों पर कहीं भी संकट आएगा तो मोदी जी साथ करें वो मिशन गंगा चला रहे लेकिन अखिलेश का मिशन दंगा चलता था दंगा यूक्रेन में जो हिंदुस्तानी हैं जिनको अब सरकार ला रही है उसका चुनावी लाभ उठाने का प्रयास कर रही है बीजेपी निश्चित रूप से इसलिए क्योंकि भारत सरकार को और पूरे दुनिया को आज से पंद्रह दिन पहले ये मालूम हो चुका था की यूक्रेन और रूस का युद्ध होने वाला है उसके बाद उन्होंने इंतजार किया आखिरी क्षण तक कि जब ये चुनाव आ जाएगा आखिरी पूर्वांचल का तो हम उस चीज को थोड़ा सा प्रोपगंडा करके दिखलाने का काम करेंगे टच में आ सकते हैं। इन उत्तर प्रदेश फैमिली मेंबर्स ऑफ स्ट्रैंडेड स्टूडेंट्स अपील टू पॉलिटिशियंस टू ट्रीट दिस टू एज एन इश्यू ऑफ कंसर्न हमारे जो माननीय मुख्यमंत्री जी हैं माननीय प्रधानमंत्री जी हैं ये सारे लोग यहीं गोरखपुर में आए हुए थे और अगर आप मेरा घर देखेंगे तो मंदिर के जस्ट अपोजिट पीछे पड़ता है तो हम लोगों ने ये कोशिश की थी कि ये लेटर जो मैंने लिखा था ये लेटर किसी भी तरीके से पाँच मिनट का समय भी अगर मिल जाए तो मैं उनसे मिल लूँ उन्हें बता दूँ कि ये सिचुएशन है बट हमारे सारे आदरणीय नेता अपनी रैली में इतना ज़्यादा व्यस्त थे सर कि मुझे पाँच मिनट का भी टाइम नहीं मिल पाया Whether the evacuation resonates with voters or not is debatable. Opposition leaders like Akhilesh Yadav, Priyanka Gandhi and Mayawati have all questioned the government on misplaced priorities. Bureau report NDTV. BJP ne itna chala And in the second phase of the battle for Manipur it is really between 11 constituencies the second phase of the election the battle is dominated for 11 constituencies by Naga tribes. Ratnadeep Chaudhary reports from the epicenter of hill politics. A new highway being built in Ukrul in Manipur's Naga dominated hills by the BJP government connecting the valley to its once troubled hills. An attempt by the BJP to make inroads into a region they did badly last time winning only one of the 11 seats here. These enchanting hills of Manipur were once troubled by gunshots. These roads were lesser traveled. but now a four lane highway is improving connectivity between ukrul and imphal perhaps another step to bridge the gap between the valley and the hill region of the state at ukrul the bjp has fielded former national footballer somatai saiza this time bjp is going to form the government that's why our people also wants to be part of the the government formation that's why people are supporting this i thought political politics is totally different from football but this all the same observe analyze and execute but a challenge comes from the bjp's own ally the naga people's front which is contesting on its own its candidate says that the core issues are the delays in the peace talks between the naga insurgent groups and the government the talks stalled on the core issue of a separate naga flag and constitution in ukrul there is no proper road there no connectivity no proper school no education no health care no water supply no power supply no internet now this is the fate of the people in ukrul there should be peace agreement at the earliest possible between the nagas and india npf is a singularly a uh, party which is you know 100% supporting this uh, peace agreement the naga talks do find resonance here ukrul is the home district of nsc and im chief th muiva who has not been allowed to enter manipur for decades as naga by blood no we feel bad no that our leader cannot enter our own home his own homeland he cannot be with us this is a it is a pain that the, everyone is unable to express in words others are not very impressed with bjp's development push saying it's the government's duty it is the moral responsibility of the ruling government to provide the basic infrastructure the basic necessities of the people of the land you know whether our represented mla is from bjp or any other party it doesn't matter e <laughs> ramdi 
as the election music fills the air, these 11 seats would set the tune for who forms the government in this multi-corner poll battle. With Ratan Saikom, in Ukrul, Ratandeep Chaudhary for NDTV. Well, that's all the time we have on the news. Stay tuned to NDTV 24-7 for the latest.